me, Christina Alabato, back for another rendition of Career Coaching with Christina. I am back. Today we are talking all about self-tapes, which is why I am in my self-tape moment. So let's talk about self-tapes. It is so important for all actors and aspiring actors to figure out a self-tape setup that works for them. So I'm gonna talk to you all about my setup, how I did it. Bob over here on this camera is gonna show you the setup. Bob, do you wanna take a step that way? Can you show us everything that we're seeing here as far as our setup goes? Thank you. So we're gonna chat all about the way that we set our stuff up, what we bought, how we decided on our equipment, and what we do when we self-tape. So let's do this. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, the reason that self-tapes are so important right now, obviously is because COVID has put a huge wrench in the way that we audition as actors. But it is something that we as actors need to invest in anyway, so it's kind of a good time for us to figure it out. And auditions will probably be virtual for a while, so it really is worth the time and teeny tiny bit of investment that it takes to set yourself up. Now, Bob and I have a self-tape business called Self-Tape NYC, so we invested in this like major equipment. You do not need all of this crazy stuff that we have to have a stellar self-tape. If you have a smartphone, you are good to go. You don't need some fancy camera. The most important things for you to do is to set yourself up with the best and easiest way for you to self-tape in your environment. So, things that are absolutely necessary. A backdrop that is blank. This is me and Bob set up. We purchased this big thing of butcher paper online and did you just get my Sour Patch Kid socks? Maybe. <laughs> okay, anyway, so we bought this big thing of butcher paper. Bob, can you pan up there? I don't know if you can see it properly. We didn't want it to be totally in our way in our apartment. We hung a curtain rod in our apartment so that we could hang this big piece of butcher paper and then we rolled it up and it is like good to go. So we need a blank backdrop. This can be something like butcher paper and curtain rod that I just showed you that me and Bob did or it can be as simple as a blank wall. And it could be any color. You could do gray, you could do blue. Sometimes white isn't like the best option because it can wash you out. So even if you're in your room and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do, you can paint one of your walls blue or even a, a really light gray. So backdrop. Second most important thing, in my opinion, is lighting. All it takes is like a tiny little investment in something as simple as a small ring light to bring your tapes to life. We bought these two LED um, lights. We thought that these were going to be awesome for our setup. We invested a little money in them. If you're interested in those, I'm going to put everything that we have in our setup in the description below. But these lights are awesome, but it can be as awesome with a ring light just so that I can see your face. I want to be able to see you. No shadows, no anything, just you. So lighting is really important. And if you picked one thing to spend money on, in my opinion, do you agree with me, Bob? Yeah. Lighting. I think lighting is it. Because if you have a smartphone, that's all you need. Lighting, a blank space in the back of you, and your smartphone. That's it. The advanced version of this, if you want to add a couple more things to your setup to make it even more spectacular, is audio. So here you can see we have hooked up to our MacBook a microphone so that you can hear my voice loud and clear and without a lot of distractive other noise. Anything that I can take away from being distracting is helpful and sometimes really clean audio, all it can do is help you. This is a microphone that we invested in for my voiceovers and for this business. Um, it runs in the $100 range, but you can find a, a microphone for as little as $50 that can really help with this. So we set it up here. USB mic. So. A USB mic, yeah, so it goes right into the, into the laptop. Okay, so now Bob is behind the camera. Thank you so much, cameraman Bob. I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the technical things with self-taping. My rule of thumb is I do not slate unless they ask me to slate. Um, and when we slate, just like in-person musical theater auditions that I talk about all the time, it is about your personality shining through. It is not about, hi, my name is Christina Alabato and I'm doing scene one and side two. Thank you so much. That is not me. That is me being robot version of myself and that makes absolutely no sense. Hi everyone, my name is Christina Alabato. I'm gonna be doing scene one, I'm five four, thank you so much. That, just be yourself. I promise it will take you a lot farther. If you're doing TV and film sides, just to memorize them. And I know sometimes young people always come to me and say, but Christina, they gave me the audition yesterday and it's due tomorrow. It's just kind of part of getting into that TV film world and just getting used to memorizing. And don't be um, too locked in to word for word, right? You need to memorize, but also you can allow it to be filled with your personality. Um, and so if you say and instead of 
um, it's okay. It really is okay. Just make it you. My rule of thumb with your angles is that they can really make or break the self tape. The goal is that my eye line is the same as the center of the camera. So Bob, can you actually raise the camera way too high? So we can see that this probably looks awkward. It looks way too high. It probably doesn't look natural. You're looking down on my face. Not really what we want. So now if we bring it down too low and you have it pointing up at you, right? Awkward, way too low, you're looking up my nose, it's not a flattering image. So the crop that we're looking for in a nice, awesome self-tape, we really want it to be a nice around here shot. I always say like under booby, above, right here above the head. This is sort of what I'm going for. Um, like I was saying, if it's a super big scene, um, a musical theater comedy scene, or I'm singing and I'm belting super hard, I will actually ask Bob or whoever's helping me or myself to um, zoom out a little bit. Um, just so I have a feel a little more space to like belt at the top of my lungs without feeling like I'm belting at the top of my lungs right here. You know what I mean? Right? So um, I like to zoom out a little bit. You never want too much space on top of your head. Can you show what that looks like, Bob? Um, it can get really awkward if there's a lot of space up here. So just make sure that it's a really nice clean thing. You can also crop that afterward. If it's a super intimate scene, don't be afraid to zoom in a little bit as well um, and so that they really can see, you know, especially if it's a quiet scene, it can be nice to have them close in on you. And again, you can make these decisions afterwards in the cropping, um, but don't be afraid to sort of see and feel different versions of that. Now let's talk about our reader angle. So if I'm deciding to sit on a stool for my tape, which is what I'm doing right now. You want your reader to be just off of camera. So I am placing Bob right here. Hey, Bob. Now we can see in my eye line that I am not going over here. I am also not going right here, because that's weird. I am just putting my reader just to the right or left of the frame. So Bob is right here. Now, when it comes to your angle with your reader, you want your sight line to be consistent. So right now, Bob is on my level here. But, because I'm on a stool, what wouldn't work is if Bob was standing and not on a stool himself because then I would be looking here, right? I wanna be having a conversation on the same level and eyeline as my person. And that goes for standing as well. If you're standing, your reader should not be sitting. And if you're sitting, your reader should not be standing. Does it make sense? Because then your angle doesn't make sense for the conversation you're having. Unless it's specific for the scene, like you're getting interrogated by someone. And so that might be helpful for them to be standing so that you're looking up at them. Or maybe you're interrogating somebody else and maybe it's powerful for you to be looking down at them. You know what I mean? So think about it that way. Don't forget, even though I feel a little stiff right now, right? Cause I have these two huge lights. I have the camera right on me. I have my microphone. I have this backdrop behind me. You still have to give yourself the freedom to feel your environment. So if I'm doing a scene where I'm, I'm in a cave looking around, I'm looking around at the cave. I'm not just here in the cave, right? I'm feeling the environment of the scene. So you really have to kind of create your, your space around you. I would not be afraid to enter or exit the scene. If I have a scene where I'm like, you know what? F you, I don't wanna be with you anymore. Goodbye. See dramatic walk out. And then you fade out of that. So you don't have to feel like stuck right here, right? You can walk into the scene, you can leave the scene, you can turn over here and look at something and then talk to the reader over here. So it's all about allowing this space to be as dynamic as possible. This setup works for anybody doing anything in audition land, whether it be musical theater, concert work, TV and film, making a reel for yourself for agents or managers. This kind of setup is great. Anyway, that's all I have to say about self tapes. I hope this was helpful for you. I will put all the equipment that I showed in this video in the description of this self-taping video. If you have any other questions about self-tapes, throw them in my comments. But again, it's all about lighting, angles, and being yourself on camera. So don't forget about that. And again, you don't have to spend $5 billion for a nice self-tape setup. You can do it on your budget, and now is the time more than ever to sort of figure this out. So do this for yourself. You got this. Keep fighting, keep auditioning, keep going, all of my actor friends and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe, and share this if it was helpful for you, and um, best of luck.